grew up in Bakersfield, California, listening to classical music, his dad's favorite, rock and roll, and the new Bakersfield sound. John and his brothers like to sneak in the back door of KERO-TV to listen to a local show hosted by cousin Herb Henson. John's mom encouraged all of her children to take music lessons. John began with the piano, but soon realized the guitar was more to his liking. When he was 16, John and his friends put together a band called the Titans. John booked the Titans at events all over Central California. Soon, a representative from Capitol Records discovered them playing at the Paola Bowling Alley. He signed them on the spot, and the boys were headed to Hollywood. Capitol Records released a single under the band's new name, The Hollywood Vines. The record did well, but, unfamiliar with the pitfalls of the music business, the band's career was short-lived. After high school, John and his friend Rick Drayson joined the Army. On a weekend pass, John and former classmate Linda rekindled their friendship, married in 1963, started a family, and moved to San Diego. While attending San Diego State, John and three friends formed the band Rocks BC. They played all around town and in various recording sessions. In 1969, John took a job at West Plaza Shopping Center in Arizona where he applied his marketing degree. In 1972, he accepted a position as PR director for John F. Long, Phoenix's largest home builder. John was able to combine his job and musical interests by booking local bands and musicians at marketing events. During this time, John played in a band called Sundown with Ganelle Hodge, co-writer of Earth Angel, and Michael Woolbright, formerly with England Dan and John Ford Coley. Throughout this time, John continued to gather information about the music industry. Then he met John Perhaney. Our great master at the time was John Brahaney, who had, with Len Chandler, started the Los Angeles Songwriters Showcase, which was an, a nonprofit organization in Los Angeles for songwriters, obviously. So he would come to LA when he could, uh, and San Diego, and San Francisco, and whatever, and we'd each hear each other's guest speakers. And so he would ask people, John Iger would, at the Songwriter Showcase or at Expo, he would say, would you be willing to come into Phoenix to do a workshop for us or to, to be a guest speaker? John Brahaney used to say, there's a difference between expressing yourself and communicating. And it was the communicating part that a lot of these people, I think John Iger picked up on obvious, how to make it a workable lesson. Following Brahaney's blueprint in 1977, John, Mike Woolbright, and Bernie Bachman launched the Arizona Songwriters Association. Through the years, John has hosted many famous guest speakers. Arizona writers have had songs recorded by charting artists and featured in movies and television because they were heard by industry decision makers at an ASA meeting. In 1996, Lon Austin, Gavin Weezer, and John established the one-of-a-kind annual Arizona Songwriters Gathering, featuring seminars, song critiques, and workshops. Many people aren't aware that John is also a publisher with an impressive number of song placements in movies and television. John has played in recording sessions on stage with numerous bands and has even occasionally dragged his friends to be in music videos. Songs have been recorded by national artists, most notably One Night Stand by Ethel and the Shameless Hussies. In the 80s, John and singer-songwriter Randy Mossberg co-produced a cable TV show, The Arizona Songwriter, spotlighting area talent. John has won numerous awards and commendations, including a national win with co-writer Craig Griffin for their song, The Way You Look in Her Eyes. You know, I can't remember exactly. Um, I remember uh, turning onto the freeway and thinking to myself, Mama took my hand, sat down thinking my about my side. wife. Said, Son, she's got it's that look in the way I look in her eyes. eyes. That's what's most important. And I thought, oh boy, that could be a good title. And then I had some friends over and John over, and we were we we loved to watch the fights in the, at that time in our life. And uh, this was about 1988. And so after the fights, the, the guys left, and John and I were standing out by his car out in front of my house. And I said, I've got a, a title. 
And he said, what is it? And I said, uh, it's the way you look in her eyes. Well, John picked up on the double meaning of that right away. And uh, we got really excited about it. And uh, we ended up writing that song and we ended up winning a uh, Rocky Mountain Songwriters Contest with it. Uh, we got an honorable mention in one of the Billboard Awards, awards in that same year of 1993. John has dedicated his life to helping people with the Arizona Songwriters Association and the Entertainment uh, Hall of Fame and so many organizations over the years where he put in all this time and it was strictly volunteer. He's helped arguably as many people in Arizona as anybody in Arizona music. Not only does he continue to help people locally and attend events and give people information, but we've had people leave here from Arizona and go to Nashville and John supplied them with the connections so when they got there, they had somebody uh, to talk to. John's commitment to the business and the craft of songwriting has had a profound impact on Arizona's music community. Friendships have been formed, writing sessions enjoyed, songs placed, and careers forged. In his calm, soft-spoken way, John Iger has proven that action and determination can give rise to a legacy. So I want to congratulate him from the bottom of my heart for being inducted in the Arizona Music and Entertainment Hall of Fame because I think it's a big deal and he certainly deserves it.